And today I'm back with two very powerful, but very, very different crossbows. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm back with two crossbows, one new, one old. So this is A Tale of Two Crossbows, part two. I did a recent film where we looked at this Whopper, which is a 960 pound draw weight medieval crossbow made by myself. And this one, which is a compound uh, crossbow, 150 pound draw weight, uh, obviously not made by me. And I compared them. I compared the two, the efficiencies, how they all work. Now a question that came up again and again is why didn't I shoot both bolts of both bows? Well, it was an oversight, I suppose, and a cautious one, but I'll come to that in a minute. But today we are gonna shoot medieval style bolts of this modern crossbow. And we are gonna shoot modern bolts off this medieval bow and we're going to see what happens because I think you might find the results interesting. Those of you who watch my channel regularly will know I'm doing a series of films called the Lockdown Longbow and that is where I take a medieval weight arrow and I shoot it off a modern compound bow. Not this one but a similar one. What that does mean is that I'm pretty sure I know what results I'm going to get off this because it is a 67 gram bolt. I pretty much know what it's going to do it's going to shoot well and you're going to get a lot of momentum off it and a lot of power but we'll stick it through a chronograph we'll find out but what is not quite so known is what is going to happen with my heavyweight 960 pound bow with lightweight bolts right about this moment half of you out there are screaming at me no don't do it don't do it and the other half are going what's the big deal well here's the thing right this bow is it's an old style bow but it's set up to shoot heavy bolts there won't be any danger to the bow itself from shooting a light load. It's a bit like a dry fire on a bow. It happens from time to time. It doesn't destroy the bow. Wooden bows, it's more of an issue. Steel crossbow laths, it's fine. The string is the thing in danger. So I've measured this now, and once I've done my shot, I'll measure it again. If there's any movement, I'll just replace the string. But to be honest, a single dry fire, it will be absolutely fine. Before we pop down the range, I'd just like to say, at the beginning of my films, I introduced myself as Todd, that's me, from Todd's Workshop. That's where you find custom-made pieces like these crossbows. And Todd Cutler, and that is where you find my standardised knives. And there are loads of them that a crossbowman from 1400 would have loved to have. I'm just going to quickly show you a couple of them. These two daggers here are totally suitable for a crossbowman, either of English or continental, from 1400 through to about 1500. So they come with the scabbards, it's a basilard on the bottom, and a rondel on the top. Just beautifully made, correctly made, accurately made representations of the daggers that they would have used. Available from toddcutler.com. Back on the range, starting with a modern bow and a 23 gram modern bolt. Let's see what the speed is. Three six three point seven feet per second. So that's it was about one hundred and ten meters per second, if I remember right. For me, that is really fast because nothing moves that fast in the medieval world. I know there are bows that go faster, but for me, that's big news. So now we're going to try the medieval bolt off this 67 grams. I'm just going to show you what I've done to it to make it fit in this. Now, if you look at the bolt on top, that is a standard 12 millimeters, half inch distance there. That doesn't fit in the modern bows. So what I've done is I've had to slim it right down. And because it's just a bit of wood, I've reinforced it with some thread and some super glue, crazy glue, cyano glue, whatever. Uh, and that hopefully will be strong enough, but we're about to find out. So I'm gonna load up now for the medieval bolt. Oh, and that has just gone straight over and into the grass, but 226 feet per second. I don't know what that is in meters per second. I'll put conversion on the screen. 226, so a lot slower than the 360, but still it's going to pack one hell of a punch. We'll look at the numbers on it at the end. I wish I could see it in the target. It, it's gone. It's well gone. Rats. The next up, 960 pound windless crossbow. Uh, and for those of you out there who think that this weighs 960 pounds, it's the draw weight, not the physical weight. You would be amazed. Lovely, quite a difference, 181.9. I can't remember, about 55 meters a second. We'll put it on the screen anyway. And now for the scary one, and that's gonna be the modern bolt. Before I shoot this, I'm gonna explain what you're gonna see with what I'm doing with my thumb. This bolt, if I put it on that 
old bow is going to overbalance. It won't sit there because it's too long. So what I have to do is just like archers did if they were leaning out over the walls of a, a castle or something, I'm going to put my thumb on the back of the bolt. That holds it in place, just like you're leaning down, just as if the bolt is too long, and then I can shoot it. The string will just skid under my thumb. It all sounds really scary and alarming. It's absolutely fine. But for those of you who wonder what they did before bolt clips, that's what you do. Just undoing these strings now, because if you wait till afterwards, it can be really quite difficult. Now that overbalances, you can see it. It won't stay on the bow. So I've just got to hold it there. It's all a bit awkward, it must be said. So I'm just holding it there. You can see now with my thumb, there we go. Brilliant, brilliant. That got a really interesting result, 200.7 feet per second 200.7 of a 960 pound bow we're going to go back and we're going to talk about that I was hoping that was the kind of number I was going to get and that shows something really interesting about this bow back at base first of all I took the modern bow and the modern bolt 23 grams and it shot 111 meters per second so that's the stats on that bow as it should be and then I took the medieval bolt here 67 grams now that came out at a much lower 69 meters per second, but the energy of, you know, went up from there and that's 159 joules. And the momentum in fact was 4.6, which is significantly more than the standard format. So that was a really good, really well performing load for this bow. Fantastic. Next up, I took the medieval bow and the medieval bolts. 67 grams, 55 meters a second, 103 joules of energy. So that's, you know, what you'd expect for this. But then I took the modern bolt, 23 grams. Now this bow is 960 pounds in draw weight. For any of you who doubt that, there's a little clip at the end of this of me weighing this very bow originally when it was made. 960 pounds in draw weight. Intuitively, you are thinking to yourself, well, this modern bolt is a third of the weight of this one. It should go like lightning. It didn't. 55 meters a second, modern bolt, 61 meters per second. Now, in, ter in energy terms, 103 joules, that gives 43 joules of energy. That is absolutely rubbish. What's going on? Well, it's, it's really simple. The bow on this modern one here, it's made of materials that can spring back very, very fast, partly because they're light, but partly because of what the materials actually are. This steel bow on here is really heavy, lots of inertia. It doesn't want to move back quickly. But also, it, its rate of return, I don't really know what the scientific terminology is, but the speed with which it returns back to the, you know, the natural uh, rest position, there is just a, a maximum speed, and it cannot go faster than that. So what it means is, you can put something heavy on it, and it pushes it, and it pushes it at a speed. You put something light on it, and it will go a little bit faster, but not very much, and that is exactly what we have seen here today. So, you know, a, a way of thinking about this is this is a truck and this is a sports car. This will shift heavy loads and it will get it there and it will deliver that heavy load. But what, what it won't do and what it can't do is deliver that load quickly. It is not a sports car. It will never be a sports car. This is a 1400 state-of-the-art delivery truck. And what it delivers is big chunks of wood and metal. What it can't do is get there really fast. For that, you need your sports car. But anyway, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed that today and see you again. There. 976, just short of a thousand. Nice. Okay, well, that's gonna be Scalagrim's one then because that's what he wanted.